Hey there, welcome to Wednesday's Weekly Wrap-Up, where we wrap up the NFL news every single week. Now, what's super crazy is we're eight days away from the season. I'm super freaking excited. Like, I'm, ah, it's almost here. It's almost here, guys. One more week in a day, and we're there. Uh, also, if you haven't been paying attention, a lot of the rosters have been cut, so we had to make sure we get to that 53-man roster on every single team. So, a lot of cuts yesterday, a lot of trades, a lot of everything. So, it's pretty crazy. This past week has been, it hasn't been super crazy, right? It's still like the crappy players. No offense to all those players. You guys are great. But the bottom of the line players, some players didn't make it. Some did. Now let's just get into the news. Starting with the NFC North. Uh, Jordan Love looked amazing throughout the whole preseason. Just wrapping all that up. Jordan Love, A-OK. Uh, finishing at like 100 and some passer rating. We'll see how it goes into the regular season, but that is promising, very exciting. Um, also, Green Bay News, apparently they were the mystery team with the Jonathan Taylor trade. So everybody knew about Miami wanting to get Jonathan Taylor, but there was another mystery team. Apparently that was Green Bay, which is ridiculous because we have Aaron Jones. And if you look at the stats back to back, like Aaron Jones is average yards per carry and Jonathan Taylor is the same. The receiving yards, very similar. Like, I just don't see why, other than age, that you would want to move off Aaron Jones and go with him because, of course, he would have to be part of that deal. Or A.J. Dillon. It just really wouldn't make sense if we didn't trade one of those two players away, and I would assume Aaron Jones more than A.J. Dillon. Anyways, didn't happen. Uh, so who knows what will go on. Uh, the Bears, they don't really have a good quarterback uh, behind Justin Fields, so that's pretty scary. But other than that, yeah. It's not much in the news right now. Um, next week, again, starting out, we'll have so much news. But um, this is my NFL projections, so I will be doing projections every single uh, division right now. So for the NFC North, I have Green Bay, followed up by the Lions, followed up by the Vikings and the Bears. Both Green Bay and the Lions are probably going to make it into the uh, playoffs. Uh, well, Green Bay would if they win the, the, won the division, but the NFC is pretty weak. So, yeah, the Lions are making it in there. And um, I'm not going to get too deep in there, but if I went through every single game and I did that a few weeks ago and I reevaluated that all today with all the new changes that's happened over the past few months, um, I think it was like a month and a half ago is when I last made those projections. So updated projections, some people moved around, most people stay the same, some numbers changed, but either way, Green Bay, I know I seem like a fan right now with that 13 and four, but it just, it's the way it worked out, unfortunately, like it is what it is. Okay, going on to the NFC East. Uh, the biggest news of the week, right, is that the Cowboys traded a fourth overall pick to a 49ers to pick up Trey Lance as their number three quarterback. Um, so Cooper Rush is still going to stay in that number two position. He did really well last year. And so they're not going to move on from him right now. Uh, maybe next offseason I could see that happening, that they boot him off and just have Dak and Trey Lance. But we'll see. Hopefully Trey learn some new stuff, gets into a rhythm. Maybe they use that as leverage against Stack Prescott, but who knows? Um, and the Eagles just made some good trades this week. Nothing like super spectacular, though. As for their final predictions on how they're going to end up, I have the Eagles going 12-5, and five, Cowboys going 11-6, and six, Giants going 6-11, and 11, and the Commies going 4-13. and 13. Uh, The Eagles and the Cowboys both make it into the playoffs, so that's exciting. Um, again, I had both of those people there or both of these teams there um not my other projections again i just don't see too much changing with how their schedule lines up that they'll be moved out of the playoffs so uh good for those guys um going to the nfc south great stuff over there jimmy g made the 53 man roster on the saints that's amazing i really didn't think he was going to make it so i'm super excited that he played well enough for him to be on the 53 man roster again with all these other rosters check up on him because all those fringe players are going to be cut moved around we'll see what happens but this will not be the 53 man roster going into the actual first game um, they'll make some changes whatnot but it is super cool that jimmy g made it the original jimmy g not uh garoppolo also it's really weird that down here in the south all four teams are gonna have a new starting day one starter uh, so desmond Ritter did play for the falcons last year and he did start games but he wasn't the day one starter which is crazy uh but think about all the other ones bryce young coming in Derek carr coming in like what are we talking about right now it is ridiculous and uh, baker mayfield that is the one i was thinking about baker mayfield just it's going to be exciting. Again, I have these predictions here right now of the Panthers going 9 and 8, Saints going 6 and 11, Falcons going 5 and 12 and 4 and 13 for the Tampa Bay. So these new quarterbacks aren't going to be doing much. Uh but 
my predictions are going to be wrong, and I'm excited to see where they're wrong at. So I can see Baker Mayfield doing really well. Who knows which one of these teams is not going to be just garbage, but maybe they all will be garbage. Who, who knows? Only time will tell, right? So going into the West, the last part, really, again, the biggest news is the 49ers made the worst trade in NFL history, and it was like stamped because they traded what? So many firsts. They traded two first-round picks and some other stuff to get Trey Lance, which then turned out to just be a fourth round for them. But if Brock Purdy does do really well this year, and I hope he does, and I think he will, then it was worth it. At the end of the day, it's pretty pretty exciting there. Before we go into the predictions, we have Kyler Murray that he is on the PUP list, um, unable to perform list, right? So he has to miss the first four games of the season. So if they weren't tanking already, they're definitely tanking now. I uh, going into the predictions. I have them going one and sixteen, the worst in the NFL. Um, they might go zero and seventeen and be the first zero and seventeen team. I can see it happening, and that's just ridiculous. I wonder if they're going to move off Kyler Murray. Who knows? Um, but other than that, we have what the 49ers having the best. Uh, <laughs> that's wild. The West having the best and the worst records of the league. So we have the 49ers over there with 14 and three. The Rams going eight and nine. Seattle going six and 11. I can see those two flip flopping. Uh, but yeah, that is where I have them all right now. If Geno Smith does well, who knows? But again, right now, again, I'm going to six and 11. Moving on to the AFC North, we had Joe Burrow more than likely will actually be starting on day one, week one, uh, next week. So that's exciting for the Bengals fans out there. And then other than that, just final predictions, I have the Ravens winning the division um, and then followed up by the Bengals, Steelers, and Browns. Now the AFC gets a little weird. I have a lot of 11 and six win teams. So if you're 11 and six and you did not win, you may or may not make it into the playoffs. So the Steelers could, the Bengals could, but there's a lot of good teams in the AFC and just somehow I believe there's six teams I have on the AFC that all went 11 and six, which is wild. Um, so talking about that, let's go to the AFC East. Um, big news here. The Bills have two Allens as quarterbacks. Not really big, big news. Uh, but yeah, they have Josh Allen and Kyle Allen as their quarterbacks, which is kind of crazy. You got just two quarterbacks named Allen. Uh, more important news, though, Von Miller to be out. He's also on that PUP list. So he will be out for the first four weeks at the very least. And so that's not the greatest thing for the Bills. But again, they have a good team. They'll still make make it through right and then also max jones is the only new england quarterback right now on the 53 man roster again that will have to change um but bailey zappi didn't make the original one now they do a lot of funky stuff managing these people so they'll be like hey you're gonna make it we're just not gonna make it right now so just hold on for a second we're gonna sign you so who knows who will do it i'm, I'm assuming zappi's gonna make it to the team um come next week so we'll see what happens but new england's doing wild stuff over there thinking ahead of the game or the nfl league right uh with their move so uh, who knows but even with all that work they're still not doing well so i have them going seven and ten the worst of the afc east um then followed up by miami going 11 to six the jets going 11 to six um and then the bills going 12 and five and winning the division but as i said a lot of teams going 11 to six just it worked out the way i didn't plan it this way but um again i can see miami missing or making it i can see the jets making or missing the playoffs there's just so many good afc teams going out there talking about more afc the afc south uh so the colts went ahead and put jt jonathan taylor on that pup list as well so he'll miss the first four weeks again they didn't make a trade which means that they're dummies um but yeah they instead of trading them they just now have a player that can't play for the first four games um so that's super awesome and then the titans are making moves they traded for nick folk from the patriots for a seventh rounder uh to get a pretty good kicker and so they're looking a little bit better and better and better and i actually made a huge change for them so i was not put any respect on their name but now they picked up deandre hopkins nick folk a lot of other moves so I now have them, instead of going at 6 and 11, I now have them going at 11 and 6. And uh, Jaguars are also going 11 and 6, so that could flip-flop of either first or second place. But whoever is making it second, it's got to fight for a wild-card spot, right? So there's a lot of 11 and 6 teams as I keep repeating. It's ridiculous. Oh, and also uh, CJ Stroud um, was a named starter, so 
Again, I don't have them going too far in the Texans, but three and fourteen. I have, I think I have no rookie quarterbacks doing well this year, which is kind of unfortunate. Except for Bryce Young making it what nine and eight and making it into the playoffs and winning that division. So other than him, everybody else is kind of eh, not so great. And the Colts without Jonathan Taylor because I don't know how well he's going to play when he actually starts playing this year if he starts playing. But I have them going four and thirteen because I just you disrespected him. You disrespected the whole entire point of your team. I don't know. Oh, and one last thing about the South, which is kind of cool and kind of weird. Doug Peterson actually had his son on the roster and cut him, and his son did not make the 53-man roster. He was the fifth uh, tight end on the team, and they only kept three tight ends, so he got cut. Well, that's got to be a rough conversation. Be like, hey, you sonny old son, uh, you suck. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Maybe just make him a coach or something, dude. Like, be like, hey, you want to be a coach? You can be on my coaching team. Like, we can have fun together. And then go into the final, uh, AFC West. I believe Kansas City is going to make it back to the bowl this year, uh, but I don't believe they're going to have the best record in the AFC. But either way, they're going to win their division going 12 and 4. 12 and 5, 12 and 5. Um, and then Denver following that up with 9 and 8. I had them losing two more games right now. I just, I don't know how I feel about Denver right now. Uh, but um, the Raiders are also there at 9 and 8. So you can flip flop those guys back and forth. And then the Chargers final out at 8 and 9. So that division is really good. Nobody's really super bad. And again, if you're going 9 and 8, you could easily go 10 and 7. You could easily go 11 and what, 6. You could easily go 7 and 10. So, um, those three bottom teams of the division, I could see them winning a few more games than I have here, losing a few more games. But they're all going to be middle-of-the-road pack teams for the AFC just because the AFC is so hard this year. It's so hard, and I just, I just, it's difficult to predict these things because, again, any given week you have the worst team beat the best team. Um, I actually have the Lions beating the Chiefs this year on uh, next Thursday, so we will see how my predictions start out. Starting with that game, let's see if the Lions can pull it off. I hope they can't because, again, I'm a Packers fan, so hopefully they lose, but I have them beating the Chiefs at the Chiefs Stadium, so it's going to be fun. I cannot wait until the season starts. Next week's video is not going to be about too much news just because uh, there's not much news going on this like weird week. We'll see what happens. I might put out a really short video, but next week I will be putting out football rules 101. So uh, you can go send it to your friend that you want to get into football a little bit. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be a breakdown. I'm going to have a really short segment on the very basics rules, but then we're going to get into just how the divisions are split up and on all, like, not super nitty-gritty details, uh, but a good amount. If you watch it, you'll learn it. I watched this one on soccer when I was trying to explore that sport a little bit, and just this guy had, like, a 30-minute video that kind of went through everything. So hopefully I'm going to try to do that for the NFL football and have just a good video to be able to share out with people so people can have like a good understanding of NFL, NFL football and we can get more fans with the sport because it's just a big family, right? So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you loved it. Um, go ahead and give me a like, a comment. Just tell me if I'm an idiot with these predictions. I probably am, but um, either way, I hope you have a great one. Love you guys. Miss you. Bye. Bye. Bye.